It is a very big night here at Highland Park High School. Not only are the Scots trying to keep their perfect season intact tonight against Junction City, but a very special court dedication is going out to head coach Ken Darting, who has had an outstanding career here at Highland Park. This is his 13th and final season, and he has led the Scots to four state championships, and we are lucky enough to be joined by the man of the hour tonight, Mr. Ken Darting. I'm Ken Darting, I'm head basketball coach at Highland Park High School in Topeka, Kansas. It's a tough neighborhood. It's a situation, and I, and I don't mean that all kids are involved, but, but you can get shot being totally innocent. You can get shot because you live next door to the wrong person, or you pulled up beside the wrong car at a stop sign, and some drive-by shooter comes by and shoots. And for a mother to have to worry every time the door closes and their son or daughter goes out the door that they could not return or that they're going to get approached ten times that day to buy or to sell drugs. It, it's tough. And, and you know, the kids that come out of here make it because they're tough. My philosophy has always been that sports, in this case basketball, is a mini life lesson. When you're teaching basketball, it's just a great opportunity to not only help kids succeed in basketball, but learn the lessons that eventually is going to make you or break you in life. On our practice shirts, you see, we, not me. I want people that want to be a part of the team, truly want to be a part of the team. So we have things like, you got to cut your hair, you got to shave your face. So I just want commitment. That's, that's what it was always about is you tell me, hey coach, I'm not playing for you. But if I have to cut my hair, then you gotta go transfer or get into wrestling or whatever. And, and I understand, I don't think less of you, but you're not gonna be on my basketball team. You know what Coach Darting means to uh, players, students, to Highland Park, can be summed up probably by saying, coach, father, social worker, psychologist, and friend. He embodies all those roles into one. He's proven that you can be tough, demanding, sometimes pretty mean, but also be one of the most compassionate people I, I know. I think any of his players, or at least 99% of them will tell you that if they pick up the phone now, and call Coach Darting and ask for you for something, he's going to do his best to, to help them. When you get him off the court, he'd do anything in the world for just about anyone, and especially his players. Once you're a member of that family, uh, it never goes away. It never goes away. He sacrificed for the greater good of the kid and not for himself or the, pro or, or the program or the team, but what's best for the kids. And uh, there's very there's very few uh, that's out there like Coach Darnan and Specie that's, that's becoming in, in, in steam because everything that he does and how he sees this this basketball game and and how he sees these kids. Since becoming the head coach at Highland Park High School in 2001, Ken Darting, known as Coach D has established one of the most dominant high school basketball programs in the state of Kansas. Doing so by appearing in seven state championship games in just 12 seasons and winning four state titles, including three in a row in the years of 2007, 2008, and 2009, none of which have been more celebrated than Darting's nationally ranked undefeated 2007 state championship team which was voted one of the top three best high school basketball teams in Kansas history. But in spite of all of his success on the court, Darting's biggest achievements are made by keeping his inner city players off the streets. He does this with his uncompromising and demanding style of coaching, which has resulted in 52 of his players earning college scholarships and all of them learning some of life's toughest lessons. I think when you start to list the, the elite teams across the state of Kansas, the, the Highland Park basketball team is on that list. As far as in the state of Kansas, if, if you were to rank the top 10 coaches all time in high school, there's no doubt Ken Darning would be among those 10. 
And I think Ken Darting would maybe get an asterisk by his name because I think he had to overcome some things that maybe some other programs didn't have to. Well, I've been covering Highland Park basketball for 25 years. When you talk basketball, no matter where I go, whatever sport I'm covering, invariably Highland Park basketball comes up and people want to talk about Highland Park basketball and Coach Darting because he's not only regarded as a, as a great coach, but he's regarded as a character. So everybody wants to know if all the stories are true and all that. So. After 19 years overall at Highland Park, 12 spent as coach, Ken Darting has decided to step down after this season. They can win state championships. They can be overwhelming and dominant, uh, and that can continue uh, with everybody staying on board and staying we, not me. But, uh, you know, I don't know. If something come up, I could coach sometime later. But I won't coach against Highland Park. I'll never hope for anything but success for Highland Park. And uh, so that, that's all I want is continued success and, and somebody who truly, truly cares about the total kid, not the basketball player kid. Highland Park is located on the southeast side of Topeka, Kansas, an area that has a reputation of drug activity and gang violence. We are the poor side of town. This started out as sort of the uh, suburban school. It was, it was the high class part of town. And over the years, as we've had white flight and, and whatever, people keep moving, moving, moving. And the people who are here, while they may not be the richest, they are certainly proud. Like any other inner city high school, Highland Park's hallways are filled with students that come from broken homes. A lot of them come from divorced families, single parents, uh, minorities, uh, black and Hispanic mainly. They come to us not as prepared as most students in a lot of high schools do. So therefore they've got to, got to rebuild and they've got to come up a little bit more. You know, people have a perception about Highland Park. We're just more diverse of a population who has more of an economic barrier rather than the aptitude to do the work. The aptitude is not the barrier, it's economics. I just see incredible resilience. Kids that have a perspective that I don't always have. Just like her husband, Karen Darting also provides support in many different ways for the high school, serving as mom to the players and psychologist to the student body. There are things that kids are dealing with that I can't imagine and I think they are incredibly special to handle some of the things that they handle. The potential is just tremendous because I think the strength that they gain and the insight and, and when they come out, they have just such a, a clear picture of so many things that lots of people don't know anything about. A lot of people, you know, just see people at Holland Park as being thugs and this, but they don't really know half of what they go through in their home life or half of what they've been through up to that point in high school. Most of our kids don't have a goal in life. You ask our kids, what do you want to be? I don't know. You know, they're, they're more interested in eating tomorrow, not getting shot at tomorrow, or, you know, so on and so forth. Can't tell you the number of students, unfortunately, that were uh, killed when they were at Highland Park, and parents could not afford the funerals. And we raised money, contributed monies to help the families. And those are sort of uh, things that are not in any job description, but in schools like Highland Park, you have to be willing to commit to more than that. I live on the east side of Topeka. It's a neighborhood called Ripley, some apartments. People around here know what it's about. It's not the safest. I've seen like people get murdered out there and drugs and I've seen it all. It's not but I use I usually just stay in the house if I'm not in the gym or with a teammate. It's just best for me to just stay in the house. Originally from Memphis, I moved to Columbia, Missouri, lived in Indiana. I just bounced around. My mom, we don't come for money, so we usually li lived in like a two bedroom house and all the boys slept in one room and my mom and my sister slept in another room. So it was a struggle, but it's just, it motivates me. 
I never knew my dad. I've just heard stories about him and not good stories. Uh, I really I saw pictures of him and talked to him on the phone a couple times while he was in jail, but that's about it. I really don't know nothing about him except that I have his name. You get kids that's, that spend a life, a lot of disappointments, you know, a lot of Christmases where they didn't get Christmas presents. Uh, uh, a lot of promises that never came true. Uh, so when that happens, you start not believing. It was it was difficult because I seen people with like their dads and how happy they were and stuff, and I just always wondered how that f felt. Uh, but moving here, Coach D was like the closest thing to a father that I had. Like if I get sick or. Yeah, go take me to a doctor, or if I needed anything, he'd be the first one there for me. You know, Jesse Jackson said, perceive it, believe it, and achieve it. Well, if you can't perceive going to college, if you can't perceive being successful, then it's hard to believe. Or if you don't have anybody in your family that you've watched succeed in college or something, and I come along and say, look, you can, you can graduate from college, you can go to college, you know, they're always polite and, yeah, yes, sir, coaching, but I don't think inside they're thinking, yeah, right, I can't go to college. Nobody in my family ever went to college. If it wasn't for Holland Park and Coach D, I would probably be in the streets right now selling drugs or being into gangs and fighting all the time or being in jail. I don't see any positive in my life if I haven't met Coach D and the family of Holland Park and the stories that he's told that he has told me. Anytime you find an area that's depressed or people are losing to some degree a little hope in life, to find something like a basketball program, it gives hope. It's a shining light. And that's what Highland Park basketball is to that school to the community, and really a source of pride to the city. My motivation to get better is my life situation, and I want to play college basketball at the highest level, just like everyone else. I want to go to college and play for a, a Division I school. That's always been my dream to play Division I. My goals after high school are to play college basketball, and my other goals are to get a degree, because I just don't want to play basketball for the rest of my life. I mean, I feel like I can do something else and do more with my life than that. Everybody this week has asked me, because it's my last one, you know, do you want this one? Where's go? Every single state championship I've won, whether it's at Highland Park or elsewhere, I want it just as bad as the other one because it's a different group of kids. I want this for you. It, five years ago, it was a different group of kids. Two years before that, it was a different group of kids. So every state championship is fun and just as important as the other one. I don't, this, this one to me means no more than the rest of them, means no less than the rest of them. Because I'm, I'm good, I'm fine. What I want is for you all to experience it, for you all to have that. So just make sure you're willing to fight for it. The Kansas Expo Center for the final game of the first day of the boys State 5A basketball tournament. We've got Kansas City, Washington, the number six seed, battling number three seed, Highland Park, coached by Kenny Darting. It's up and we're underway, and Highland Park's going to get the tip to Shoppy Clark. And here's a steal. Highland Park with a steal in the layup and count the bucket. Cameron Clark! Oh, Clark, the, this is the motor of that basketball team. 
Into the point guard, Cameron Clark. Clark all the way. Oh, oh, oh Clark! Alley oop to Shappy Carr. Well, the 23 point win tonight by the Highland Park Scott, and that sets up a matchup at 8:15 Friday night as uh, the Highland Park Scots will take on unbeaten Hayes. Oh my, we haven't seen Highland Park tested like this since the Lawrence game in the Tobik Invitational Tournament, and they lost that one. Maybe shoot it with enough time for a for a tip in. Here's Jamal McMurray. McMurray to Shoppy Carr from 16. Got it! So here's the big free throw right here for Cam Clark. Probably playing a little bit of college baseball somewhere, but we'll have memories of this one. Hit both free throws. And Hannah Park wins. Scott, 48. Hayes, 40. Scott to the state championship game tomorrow night at 6.15. And the Hannah Park Scots in 5A trying to send Kenny Darting out in style. Looking forward to you talking about it. be the exact same type of game tomorrow. You know, we're going to get in the trenches and black each other's eyes and bloody noses and see who crawls out at the end. First and foremost, you know, you need to know this. Biggest game of your life, no question. As I, I, as I look, I see y'all focused, I see you ready, I feel good, uh, but it can't be too much. You can't make it too much. As kids, I've told you a hundred times, you're winners. You know, you're beautiful people. And whatever happens in the next 32 minutes does not change that. And, and I promise you guys, I promise you, and we'll, we're going to be leaving that court with the same class that we're not celebrating when we win and we're not crying when we lose until we get in here anyway. We're not chipping at the referees, we're not chipping at other team because we're class. We always play with class, we're going to play with class. Okay? Any questions? Let's go have a ball. For the Lansing Lions, coached by Ron Briggs, they have not tasted defeat yet this year. They're 24-0. Should be a great matchup tonight between these two teams. They played uh, 47 games, 48 games, and there's been one loss. <laughs> They're not very deep. Neither team plays more than seven. But there's a great crowd here from Lansing, and we've got a great crowd over here from Highland Park as well. All right, job. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, buddy. Let's run, let's run horns into high low to start. All right, here we go. Tip is on its way. It's controlled by Highland Park, and the Scots have it to McMurray. The Lansing Lions and the Highland Park Scots, all the marbles on this one. Khalil Bailey, a 6'2 senior. His vertical is somewhere in the upper 30s. McMurray with a basketball. Up front to Eddie Hunt. Right side, Cam Clark for three. Oh, baby. Cam <laughs> Clark for the three ball. And the Scots have their biggest lead. They're up by four. It's not easy in the paint against Lansing. No, no they're 24 and 0 for a reason. We're getting killed by guards. Snyder and Gibson both. He's got more rebounds than all of us put together. Keep the ball out of the middle. Boy, Joe Snyder's done a good job on McMurray. Mm -hmm. That's a great matchup between two really good basketball players. We just quit picking for you if you're not going to use it. You're never open. What in the world? Oh, my. And right now it's a 7-2 run going by, uh, by Lamping. Wide open is Osby for three. Swish! Osby with three. Score now. Laura, Lansing Lions 18. Hollow Park Scott 17. Max! Eddie! Bailey just eating arm postmen alive. Wow! Right now you're blown out if we're not holding them to should be 18. Give up a dunk at the gun to make it 20 to 17. 
and you're not going to win state championship games missing gimmies and free. You can't. You can't win. This is the cream of the crop. This is the best teams in the state. You've got to make elementary plays. You've got to get better offensively. It's our game. It's right where I'd want it if I could pick it. Six-point lead for the Lansing Lions over the Highland Park Scots. Vegas! Vegas! Here's it. Shot by shopping car. Eight feet away. Rimmed out. Bailey, strong move by oh, Bailey up and in. Right Nobody came over to get Bailey. Gives it over to Shoppy Carr, who can't handle the pass. It's out of bounds. Here's Cam Clark driving down. Wide open is a baseline shot for three. Back iron, no good again. And Lansing Lions are limiting Hanna Park to one shot. Scots need to score on a couple of possessions here to get this manageable as you go into the fourth quarter of play. Look at Daniel. He don't know where his man's at. Oh, man. And all of a sudden, it's a 13-point lead. Look at the fight. Oh, we scared now, ain't we? Now we went man. It was our zone fault. We didn't know who to cover. You know now. Blowout time. Lay down and get blown out. Didn't come. Dale don't have the heart. Adam Park is uh, out of sync, to say the very least. First time this year they found themselves down by 16 points. They're not stalling, they're called, this is called efficient offense. You've got the game one, you just run offense until you get that. That's a, that's a team right there. That's a team right there. Going backwards. Lansing Lions are going to finish the season a perfect 25 and 0. Holland Park's going to end their year 23 and 2, and a second place trophy in the Class 5A Boys Tournament. The last game that Kenny Darting will coach for the Holland Park Scots in his illustrious career as a head coach. He's made a lot of young guys into men. Oh, by all means. You know, he had some players come through there that could have gone one way or the other, and Darting has led him down the right path rather than the long path, mostly as a father figure. If people knew what Kenny Darting does behind the scenes with some of his basketball players, you would simply be amazed. 42 years, that's the worst we've ever been dominated in my career. And then if we play them 10 times, they're going to beat us like that 10 times. I'm tickled, I'm pleased, and I'm proud to be a coach of this group. And, and if I was sitting here and we're throwing water on each other and celebrating, I'd be saying the same. I remember what I said, I'm done with this business, but this is many life. This is many life. This Today's game can help you do a lot of things, not only in your future in basketball, but in life. So I, I think they will name the new coach in the next two weeks. Uh, so you'll be able to have time before school's out to meet with him and get lined out for whatever you want to do in the summer. So any any questions? Anybody, any seniors want to say anything? Go ahead, Chuck. I mean, I know we didn't win. I know that, but I love y'all. Y'all are my right. right on. That's brothers. right. It's right. been a great four years with y'all, honestly. I love That's every the seniors. only thing. We'll break it down. Yeah.
two things I'll be involved in. I'm gonna be involved with basketball. I'm gonna be involved with kids. I'm gonna, of course, walk my dog, which I always do. I wanna get back to playing golf on a regular basis. As far as I'm concerned, I'm retired. But I would never say that something couldn't intrigue me to, you know, go back and coach somewhere. You know, always in parting, the one thing that I can say, it's always great to be a Scott. It's, you can't, it's, it's like Michael Jordan. There's no second Michael Jordan. There will never be another Coach Darden. You can compare who you want, but there's never going to be another Coach Darden that did what he did and that's, that's done what he's done. The great thing about him is his players can come ask him for anything. I've heard of opposing players coming and asking him for stuff too. They're not getting the college scholarship offers they want. They're having trouble getting into a certain prep school or a certain college. He'll pick up the phone and do that. And that's what I think impresses me the most about he, he's a He's a player's coach, even sometimes not even for his own players. It's been, a, it's been a blessing from God to be able to have this opportunity to be able to coach um, for the kids' sake, you know, and it's not just Coach Darden, but he's opened up the door for me to have connections with people that I never ever in my life imagined that I was going to have a connection with, and I believe it's been God-given, and um, I just wish him the best going forward, and uh, just thank you to the Holland Park community, the kids, the team, um, and just anybody connected with the program over these years. It's been a memorable time. And I think that the best thing about what Highland Park does is that they're really ambassadors for the game of high school basketball across the state of Kansas. And nationwide, people will look to Highland Park and think, that's exactly the way we should play the game. If we can play that game like those kids in Topeka can play at Highland Park High School, then we've got really something special. And that's what Highland Park should be most proud of. There's, there's a lot of kids that, that we remember that we didn't reach. But what we remind ourselves of, we think of the number that we did and the successes that they've had. Wow, do we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's something that over a lifetime you can, as, as coaches, we can be proud of the fact that, that these young men succeeded in life, which is what it was really all about.